Geologists are working at the bottom of the ocean when suddenly... The expedition commander tries to calm him down. Mr. DeJesus, I can't, I can't get an accurate readout if you can. Doc, uh, we got an emergency here. Doc, we need you, got trouble. Doc, Doc! But the doctor did not respond. I think you're hyperventilating. Hyperventilating my ass. Let's see how you do this. He's gonna blow. No, he's not gonna blow. The situation becomes critical while the geologists lead the distressed partner to the underwater submarine. Open the damn door. Rescue is very close, but the guy was suffocating. Keep him moving. Will the heroes be able to understand what happened to the spacesuit and uncover the horrors hidden in the ocean depths? The expedition's leader is named Stephen Beck, and he is terribly worried about his injured subordinate named DeJesu. The unconscious guy is lifted onto the submarine in an elevator. Beck rushes to examine DeJesu. Fortunately, the guy starts breathing. The geologists have been on the submarine for 87 days, extracting silver from the ocean floor. Only three days remain until the end of the expedition, and the guys are already looking forward to going back home. But the incident with DeJesu makes the geologists even more impatient, and they criticize their captain Beck. If he was real shag boss, Doc would have been there. We got real lucky this time. The doctor did indeed disappear without a trace. However, the geologists still don't suspect that the doctor is ready for an even bigger setup. Meanwhile, the team's jolliest and most eccentric member, nicknamed Sixpack, tries to mock the situation. Among other troubles, the submarine has recently started making unexplainable noises. The mechanic, Cobb, even believes there's a risk of implosion. The team has no idea how many more troubles await them in the near future. Beck approaches the team and asks about DeJesu's well-being. Then he suggests that his subordinates finish important tasks today and take tomorrow off. What are you giving us today off? Looks that way. Beck wants to relieve tension within the team and set a more friendly atmosphere. Everyone agrees. Suddenly, there's an announcement about the disappearance of Dr. Thompson. He behaves as if nothing is wrong and even jokes about not wanting to fulfill his duties. Beck tries to reprimand him, but the doctor only disrespects him. It seems that no one on the submarine takes the commander seriously. However, the team still doesn't realize what Beck is capable of in a critical situation. In the evening, a team member nicknamed Willie inspects the spacesuits to fix any possible malfunctions. The others are also keeping themselves busy. The doctor treats DeJesu and mechanic Cobb fixes the ventilation system using a chewing gum. Hey, how you do this? You don't say anything to anybody. Job security. Head. Let's go. Willie inspects Sixpack's spacesuit when suddenly a sea spider jumps on her. The guy deliberately placed it there to play a prank on Willie. However, she doesn't appreciate the joke very much. Meanwhile, Beck contacts the ground command. The boss is satisfied with him and the amount of silver they've extracted, but Beck would like to return to the surface as soon as possible and never work on underwater expeditions again. After work, the team gathers in the recreation room. Suddenly, they hear an unpleasant creaking sound coming from the submarine. This slightly unsettles the group, but they are already mentally preparing to go home, so they don't worry too much. Sixpack calmly goes to sleep. Suddenly, he finds the spider that Willie planted under his pillow. Enraged, Sixpack returns to the common room and starts yelling at Willie. Beck hears this and announces that both instigators of the conflict will have a working day tomorrow as punishment. The next day, Sixpack and Willie head to the ocean floor to drill into the rock. Suddenly, Sixpack slips off a cliff and falls even deeper into the abyss. Communication with him is lost. The team is in distress and Willie decides to go search for her partner because he will soon run out of air. She has to venture into an unexplored part of the seabed. Bowman, what's the self-contained air capacity of that suit? 30 minutes. Suddenly, Willie notices a massive wrecked ship at the bottom. Its name, Leviathan, is written in Russian letters. She's scared, but she decides to go inside the ship. Meanwhile, Stuart Booman investigates the Leviathan ship through the base and learns that officially the vessel is located in the Baltic Sea. It seems that the Russian authorities are concealing the tragedy that happened to the ship. Maybe a ship sinks and they don't notice it's missing. <laughs> Beck gives Willie one minute to search for Sixpack. She won't have air for longer. 
The girl meticulously explores every corner and finally finds Sixpack with a safe. He shouts with joy, thinking he found a treasure. The group safely returns to their submarine and opens the safe. Among other things, they find a flask of vodka, which Sixpack quickly hides in his pocket. Stuart Booman notices it, but doesn't report him. There is also a videotape and several folders with dossiers in the safe. Dr. Thompson understands Russian and reads what happened to the crew members of the Leviathan. Deceased. Everyone feels uneasy, considering that the same thing is written on the other dossiers. But soon, the group finds a bottle of vodka and rejoices because they haven't had alcohol for three months. However, Beck confiscates the bottle from them and hides it in his own safe. The group still has no idea of the horrors their discovery holds. Beck and the doctor review the cassette, which turns out to be the captain's video diary of the Leviathan. He explains that the entire crew fell ill with something, and then even more inexplicable events started to occur. However, the recording abruptly cuts off. Now the doctor believes that the Leviathan was deliberately sunk to hide something horrific at the ocean floor. But Beck is tired of everything that's been happening and doesn't want to dig any further. He simply informs the ground command about the Leviathan and washes his hands of it. Meanwhile, the team opens Beck's safe and reaches the vodka. However, they are disappointed with the drink. Water. <laughs> Son of a gun doesn't trust us. Then Sixpack goes to this bunk where he has hidden a flask from the Leviathan. Stuart Booman knows about it and comes to him to have a drink as well. The group has no idea what a horrible mistake they are all making. Willie goes to the commander, who is trying to fix their crumbling submarine. Beck and Willie both feel uncomfortable in the company of the others. They complain to each other about the circumstances and feel a mutual sympathy. Finally, there is only one day left until the end of the expedition. Sixpack's condition suddenly worsens and he turns to the doctor. The doctor notices something strange on the sick man's back. How long have you had these spots? What? Don't touch it. Beck immediately reports to the command about Sixpack's illness and requests evacuation. However, the boss politely refuses him. Sixpack's condition worsened even further and he has a terrible fever. The doctor takes his tissue sample for microscopic examination. It seems that Sixpack has started to mutate. This deeply worries the doctor and he sends the data to his colleagues on the surface. They suspect genetic changes in the patient. In the evening, Sixpack passes away. The doctor covered the body and left him in the room. The other team members have been working in the ocean all day and are still unaware of the tragedy. When they return to the submarine, the doctor quietly informs Beck about what has happened. Put this on. I want you to examine him. I'm not a doctor. For this, you don't need to be. Beck notices numerous strange marks on Sixpack's body. The doctor is still unsure if it's contagious. Even the best doctors he consulted throughout the day have never encountered such symptoms. The doctor wants to examine the others, but asks not to inform them about the tragedy to avoid causing panic. The rest of the team appears healthy to the doctor. Stuart Booman is the last one to be examined. The doctor asks her to wait as Beck urgently summons him. Beck has just contacted the ground command and demands the immediate evacuation of the entire team. The doctor confirms that Sixpack's illness may be contagious, so the crew needs to be saved. However, the ground command cannot help due to a raging storm on the surface. The boss promises to initiate the rescue operation in 12 hours. Meanwhile, Booman, who is waiting for the doctor in the sick bay, worsens. Her friends find her and lay her on a couch. A guy named Jones tries to find the doctor but only finds Sixpack in the neighboring room. Jones thinks the guy is just asleep and isn't surprised when he starts moving. Oh, oh, hey. Hey, look, I'm sorry, man. You're going back to sleep, okay? Talk to you later. Jones doesn't realize that a lifeless person just moved in front of him. The friends leave to continue their search for the doctor, while Booman stays alone and discovers with horror that her hair is falling out. She goes to Sixpack to share her misfortune. Booman sees his condition and realizes that she is experiencing the same symptoms. The doctor returns to the sick bay and finds the girl in the shower. Based on Sixpack's case, she understands her fate and intentionally harms herself to avoid turning into a mutant. The team leaves Booman in the sick bay near Sixpack. Soon, they discover that the bodies of the affected individuals have grown together. Horrified, the team loads them into a bag and intends to throw them overboard. Strange things happen along the way. Somebody's alive in here. Come on, come on. Some of them believe that Sixpack and Booman are still alive, causing a delay. At that moment, the revived mutant tears the bag apart and scratches mechanic call. The bag is quickly lowered underwater on the elevator, but a piece of flesh manages to detach from the mutant. None of the crew members notice it. They sit in complete confusion, 
unaware of what even a small part of the mutant is capable of. It is already growing ahead. The doctor suspects that six back and Boomin mutated into underwater creatures due to viral infection. The ground command probably suspects this as well, which is why they are not rushing to save the crew. Beck examines six back's belongings and finds the vodka bottle. Presumably, the virus originated on the Russian ship, and six back and Boomin contracted it by drinking vodka. Tension rises aboard the submarine. Did anybody here care about what just happened? What are you gonna do about it, huh? To distract themselves from the grim thoughts, the guys decide to have a snack. While the Jesus searches for food in the cabinets, a piece of the mutant attacks him, having become independent. The Jizu clings to the wires and cuts them off. Then, with his last bit of strength, he rushes towards Jones and pleads for help. In confusion, Jones locks the Jizu in the galley and runs to find the doctor. While no one is around, the Jizu mutates, breaks down the galley door, and escapes. Due to the severed wires on the ship, Electrical problems arise, but there's no time to fix them. Everyone sets off in search of the mutant. The crew arms themselves with whatever is at hand. Even signal flares and flamethrowers come into play. In the sickbay, it becomes apparent that the mutant has found a source of sustenance. It's growing. It's had a meal. It needs blood? Apparently. There's no point in staying silent anymore. And the doctor and Beck reveal that the entire crew of the Leviathan has apparently mutated into underwater creatures. That's why the Russians deliberately sank the ship to protect themselves. The healthy geologists have a chance to reserve face in evacuation capsules. However, according to the ground command's information, a storm is raging on the surface. So the crew decides to fight the mutants underwater, waiting for the storm to calm down so they can be rescued. Beck sacrifices his red liquid to lure the mutants into the mess hall and destroy them there. Armed with flamethrowers, Jones and Beck embark on the mission. The rest of the team waits for them. Suddenly Cobb, who was previously scratched by a mutant, worsted in condition. This itches like hell. The doctor tries to calm him down, but realizes things are dire. He quietly enters the control room and sends a message to the base about the genetic mutations occurring among the submarine's crew. Then, the doctor disposes of the evacuation capsules, preventing anyone from escaping the submarine and the virus from spreading. For now, no one on the crew suspects this. The doctor then returns to Cobb, whose chest is moving. A mutant has already formed inside him. It lunges at the doctor, attempting to bite him. Willie runs to Beck and Jones for help, narrowly avoiding becoming the victim of another mutant. Fortunately, the guys save her and calm her down. Only three uninfected crew remain. They rush to the control room and discover the doctor's deception. Oh no. We're trapped. The escape bubbles are gone. But Beck doesn't give up and sends out an SOS signal. The base immediately responds. The boss still promises to save them as soon as the storm subsides, but that won't be soon. The distress signal has been received by the Coast Guard, which is preparing a rescue mission. In the meantime, the boss suggests everyone get some sleep, to which the crew reacts aggressively since sleeping under these conditions is impossible. Moreover, no one believes that the base actually intends to rescue them. After the call, Beck tries to check the weather forecast, but access is blocked. This means there is no storm on the surface, and the command is simply messing with their heads. The news already reports that the entire geology team aboard the submarine has passed away. At the same time, another unpleasant event unfolds. Emergency warning. Countdown to implosion. The submarine had ventilation problems for a while, and now the access to air is blocked and the ship will explode in 10 minutes. The friends want to fix the issue without getting caught by the mutant, but the creature finds them. The friends run away, shooting flamethrowers at it, but the doors along the corridor start shutting down, and the submarine gradually falls apart. While Jones holds the door with all his strength, Beck tries to rescue Willie, who fell off the bridge. The girl is saved, but Beck is grabbed by an approaching mutant. By a miracle, he manages to reach a saw and fend off the enemy. There are only four minutes left before the implosion. The friends rush to the place where they can put on their diving suits and escape from the submarine. Beck comes up with a way to resurface without using the evacuation capsules. How are we gonna get to the surface? Like this. We'll triple the equation ratio. We'll float to the top like a balloon. Then Beck helps his subordinates put on their diving suits and sends them into the ocean. The commander himself still has to confront a suddenly appearing mutant. 
Beck pours gasoline into the water and ignites it using a distress signal rocket. Then he quickly jumps into his diving suit and descends underwater on the elevator. During the descent, the elevator crushes the already battered mutant. The submarine starts compressing and eventually explodes. Beck manages to swim away. Soon, all three survivors find themselves on the calm surface of the ocean surface. A Coast Guard helicopter flies nearby. The friends see it and launch a distress signal rocket. The rescuers need to hurry because the sharks are already surrounding the friends. However, the sharks turn out to be not the biggest danger. A massive underwater mutant emerges to the surface and grabs Jones. The helicopter has already landed on the water, but Beck doesn't rush to get on board. First, he wants to save his friend, but poor Jones cannot be saved anymore. Then Beck decides to seek revenge and throws the last distress signal rocket into the mutant's mouth. The creature explodes and Beck grabs the rescue rope and flies away with the helicopter. The only survivors, Beck and Willie, disembark at the helicopter base and walk away, embracing each other. On their way, they encounter the boss from the ground control station. She pretends to be concerned, but Beck slaps her and happily walks away. Do you believe in underwater monsters in unknown parts of the ocean? Share your thoughts in the comments, give us a like, and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next videos.